Shazam was directed by David F. Sandberg and is about a young boy named Billy Batson. He's a foster kid, he's very streetwise, he's had a tough life, and when he has an encounter with a magical wizard, he gains the ability to transform into an adult superhero when he says the word Shazam. I was looking forward to this movie for a few reasons. For one, the DCEU has been really great lately. I loved Wonder Woman, I really liked Aquaman, and I also am a big fan of David F. Sandberg, who directed Lights Out and Annabelle Creation. I like what he's done with the horror genre, so I was excited to see what he could do in a superhero film. And I'm also a fan of the 1988 film Big, starring Tom Hanks, and this looked like a superhero version of that. And so naturally that enticed me. And Shazam is a really good time. It's a very funny movie. It's it's much more of a comedy than I expected it to be actually because um, I'm not like super well versed with the character and with the backstory. But I knew enough going in, plus the trailers gave me the obvious vibe that this was a very lighthearted film that didn't take itself too seriously. So it's really coming out of the perfect time in our admittedly oversaturated superhero market with Endgame coming out, which is bound to be a very serious film. It's nice to have a movie that you can sit back and just laugh and have a good time watching. Zachary Levi is fantastic as the adult version of Billy Batson. He really embodied the spirit of a child that's never had anything good happen to him in his entire life who suddenly has this amazing experience and opportunity to accomplish things that he never expected he'd be able to do before. And all of the scenes with Zachary Levi are easily the best parts of the film. He's excellent in the film, as is Jack Dylan Grazer, who plays Freddie Freeman, his roommate at a foster home. He provides a lot of the comedy in the film, and where this could be a major risk because he is a younger actor, and so much of him being so loud and so boisterous that could get annoying. Gratefully, it doesn't. I think they struck a really good balance with the interplay between those characters. But let's talk about that foster home for a second, because for me, that's the heart and soul of the movie, and that's probably my favorite aspect of the movie. The parents were excellent. Namely, Cooper Andrews, who felt like he was the warmest soul on the planet. He was just so energetic and so likable. Billy hasn't had an easy time in life. He got separated from his mom when he was young, and never found her again, and now he's older and he's still looking for her. He's gone from foster home to foster home, and in an early scene we learn that he's searching for her in a very complex and convoluted way that gets him in trouble with the law. That could be just because he's a stupid kid and he's making dumb choices, or because the writers wanted an entertaining scene versus a more normal way of searching for someone in our modern day. But nevertheless, he ends up at this foster home with a bunch of other kids, and that right there is the best aspect of the movie. I think that's the emotional heart and soul of the movie, and most of those sequences I thought were handled really well, and that added something to the film that I think if it wasn't there, the rest of the movie would not be nearly as impactful as it is. This is definitely taking a more old school approach with superhero films. It feels more like the type of movie that may have come out in the 70s or early 80s after Christopher Reeve's excellent first Superman film from Richard Donner. It feels more akin to that spirit. There's a sense of buoyancy to the movie where it just feels like it's very light and you could use the word disposable and and some might use that word but I don't think in the case of Shazam that's necessarily an insult it just feels like a breath of fresh air amongst a lot of really heavy superhero films that we've been experiencing lately I do have issues with the movie though and most of them surround Mark Strong's villain Thaddeus Savannah this is someone who does have a backstory they set him up fairly well but then there's this huge gap between when we last saw him and when we see him now. And so much has happened to him during this period. And we're expected to basically believe that from childhood to now, he has had the exact same grudge from the exact same thing and has spent his entire life being bitter about it. And his introduction as an adult is in this facility where they're doing research about this phenomena that's spreading. People are talking about this, this magical wizardry thing that they're all experiencing, and he's trying to understand what's happening so that he can hopefully experience it too. And it is one of the most hokey scenes that I've laid eyes on in a superhero movie recently. Now, a lot of the movie is very cheesy, purposefully. And so it is entirely a possible that they were genuinely going for camp. If that's what they were doing, they succeeded. But the fact that it's a little unclear, and especially the musical score, I think is an issue here. Because the music tells us in scenes like this that it's supposed to be a serious moment, rather than letting us ease in to what really is a very campy scene with scientists looking over these like videos of people saying they encountered a wizard and shit. It's like, this is camp. 
The musical score didn't always let us know that, and it kind of messed with the tone. Because we also have scenes where Billy Batson is looking for his mom, and it's sad, and you feel bad for him. The tonal shifts between drama and extreme comedy don't always work in this film. Some of this can be forgiven though because in many ways the film is very self-aware and very satirical of the superhero genre. And you can even look at that scene I just mentioned and say they're poking fun at the superhero genre. But again, the way it's filmed, the musical score, it's, it's not as clear, I think, as it could be. You know, it, it almost feels like they really mean those scenes. But there are other scenes that are just hilarious. There's a great scene, won't spoil it, involving two characters that are very far away, and it was funny. But the film is so knowingly self-aware of what it is, to the point where there's even a direct reference to Big in the movie, and I feel like when you have scenes like that thrown in with some of these more campy scenes that didn't work for me, and admittedly a, a very weak villain, I thought, the overall movie we got is saved by Zachary Levi's charismatic performance, as well as Jack Dylan Grazer, and a great foster home story that really gives the movie an emotional weight that it would not have had without it. I'm gonna give Shazam a B. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.